Hello and welcome to Video Tours for Tots for this week. My name is Mr. Dylan if I haven't met you. And uh, let's see, is there something in my room that's a clue for what we should be studying about this week? Not the T-Rex who did that last time. Or the flower. Oh, but what's that back behind the flower? What's that back there? Let me go take a look. Hang on. Hmm, what is this thing? Let's see, it's made out of these wooden planks and plastic connectors. Looks like it could be some sort of bridge this way. Or a tower that way. I think that's a good idea. Let's learn about maybe some towers and bridges this week. And uh, if we're learning about, I actually think a good idea would be to build some towers and bridges. And if we're learning about towers and bridges and we're going to design them, maybe we should test them. So if we're designing and building and testing something, that is actually going to mean that we're going to do some engineering. So let's talk a little bit about what engineering is. And one thought you might have is, well, what about a train engineer? If we talk about train engineers. Trains are cool. And a train engineer, a guy who, does, who drives the train, it's not quite the engineer I'm talking about today. No, the engineers that we're talking about today are people who solve a problem through design. And you might be thinking, that actually kind of sounds like science. If you're solving a problem through design, but it's a little bit different. So scientists are asking questions about the world and they solve those questions through experiments. Whereas engineers will solve a problem about the world through design. So scientists answer questions with experiments and engineers solve problems with designs. So it's a little bit different, but it is kind of the same. Uh, let's think about it for a second. Sometimes scientists can use engineers to help design their experiments. So let's think about astronomers. Uh, what's the question that astronomers want to ask? Do you know what astronomers are studying? That's right, they're asking what is out there in space. And so an astronomer might want to build something to look deep into space. Do you know what that might be? Yeah, a telescope, especially a really big telescope. That would be really cool. So an astronomer wants to ask the question what's out there in space, and then an engineer would help design and build that telescope to help answer that question. And then new telescopes even have computers that help run the telescopes, or they're out in space even, or they might be on top of a mountain. So engineers might have to help scientists design the roads to get up to the mountain, and how to build this telescope, and how to get it into space for really cool telescopes. So engineers can help astronomers answer their questions. So, can someone be both a scientist and an engineer too? Oh, you bet. I'm sure some astronomers are also engineers to help design those telescopes. But let's think a little bit about what are some of the main kinds of engineers. So one kind of engineer is a mechanical engineer. And what do you think a mechanical engineer designs? Yeah, they design and build different machines. So machines like cars, or bicycles, or lawnmowers, or anything really. Anything that you can think of as a machine, it was designed by an engineer. And not just the whole, let's say, car was designed by an engineer, but also every part of that car was designed by an engineer too. The headlights, the engine, the transmissions, the seats are designed by engineers. The wheels and tires, they're designed by engineers too. Everything, all the different parts of a car are also designed by engineers too. Another kind of engineer is an electrical engineer. Mm. Now what do you think an electrical engineer designs? Let's see, an electrical engineer. They design things that must use electricity. Mm. So what uses electricity? Well, a lot of things do these days. Computers, cell phones, light switches and light bulbs even. And I think it's interesting that 
It wasn't a whole long time ago. A lot of electrical engineers actually had to build their computers right there. Uh, here's a picture of an old computer, and it even has a wooden case. The electrical engineer that put the chips all together and, and soldered them together also built like a wooden case to make that computer happen. And you know, today's computers and phones are a lot more complicated and all the parts are a lot smaller. So they're typically built in like a big factory. And then another kind of engineer is a transportation engineer. Uh, Mr. Steve, who is Mr. Dillon's dad, was a transportation engineer until he retired. What do you think a transportation engineer designs? Transportation. Well, transportation is moving people or stuff from one place to another. So they must design ways for people to move stuff from one place to another. Not the cars and trucks and bicycles, because that was mechanical engineers. So it's got to be what they go on. It's got to be roads and paths and maybe bridges and airports and things like that. Transportation engineering designs and helps build the roads so that people can move people or stuff from one place to another. So that gets us to another kind of engineer I was thinking about is structural engineers. Structural engineer. What do you think a structural engineer designs? It's got to be a, a structure of some kind. Yeah, so like the towers and bridges we're talking about today. So that'll be our mission for today. I'm going to do some demonstrations with some materials I have at my home, but I want you to be thinking about what you could do at your home. We're going to have to look around and see what materials we have to build with, and then you'll have to pick a project, either a tower or a bridge, and then we'll have to pick a, a test to do for that. So maybe for a tower, how tall it could be, or maybe we'll think of some other test to do or for a bridge, how much weight it can hold. And then we'll have to actually test it. And then we can rebuild it and redesign it and retest it and see if it's a better design or, or not. So look around your house, see what kind of building materials you have. I've got these kind of building blocks at the museum and they're really sturdy, especially with those plastic connectors. So if you have something Specialized like that, definitely build your projects with those. And I've seen just the wooden bricks part of that as a building set too, kind of loose together. So we'll need to connect things with uh, tape or hot glue. Scotch tape works okay. And Elmer's glue or wood glue for a more permanent project. And what else do we have? We got popsicle sticks or dowels. They can be good to build with. Or straws. Straws are good because they're cheap. And spaghetti noodles. And they spaghetti noodles can be kind of tricky to work with because they break pretty easy. But they can be a pretty good building material too. Or other uh, building toys too. You can make a little bridge or tower out of those pretty easy. And then I was cleaning out my yard this weekend too. And I thought of sticks. Uh, sticks are definitely a good building material. For a tower or a bridge. So to get in the mindset of towers, let's take a look at some famous towers real quick. Do you know that one? Yeah, that's called the Eiffel mm. Tower. And it was designed by a guy named Eiffel. And it is in a town city called Paris. And it's a very famous landmark in that city. Many times these towers get to become famous landmarks too. How about this one? Do you know that one? Yeah, that's the Space Needle in Seattle, Washington. And that one's pretty cool. It's a fancy tower. Up at the top, there's a restaurant, and it spins around. So you can go up there, and you can look out over the city and, and see everything. And in the background of that picture, you see a bunch of other skyscrapers. And most of those are much taller than a Space Needle. So really tall skyscrapers. Those are kinds of towers, too. So we can be designing... Fancy towers or regular type skyscraper type things too. How about this one? That's the Leaning Tower mm -hmm. of Pisa in Pisa, Italy. And it's almost 800 years old. Up at the top of it are some bells, so you can ring bells in the city. 
when you know what's going on and everything. And where do you think it's leaning? Well, they just built it kind of wrong. When they first built it, they realized, oh, it's it's a tipping. We didn't build it on the right spot. We didn't put a good enough base on the bottom. So they tried to build up the other side and tried to even it out. And it just kept leaning over and leaning over. And then later, engineers figured out how to not make it lean anymore, which is good. Because if it kept leaning, it could fall right on over. So out of all these ideas, I think the one I like the most to try out uh, is let's make a tower out of spaghetti noodles with some tape. And since we need a problem to solve since we're doing some engineering, is how do I make a spaghetti noodle tower that can hold something? That can hold... Well, let's try something small. I've got clay, so how about clay ball? Maybe one of those big camping marshmallows if you have one of those. So let's see if I can build a tower that's say that tall, that can hold a clay ball. Boy, that was a hard tower to make. Masking tape was pretty tricky. Scotch tape was pretty tricky. Masking tape was a bit easier. Let's see if we can put a ball on top of this tower. Is it gonna hold? Ready? Oh man. So that's okay though. If our engineering project, if our tower or bridge doesn't work, we can redesign it. So let's see what happened. It fell over like that. So maybe we need to change our design. Let's try that. Or maybe all I needed was just some better tape on the bottom there. Let's try this one here. Let's see, is it gonna fall? All right, I got my tower to hold up a little thing like that. Whoa, oh, there it goes. That's part of the fun of these projects too, is when they do fall apart. I'm now wondering if these spaghetti noodles might not be, you couldn't put the spaghetti noodles together with some clay. So I wonder if I take a little clay ball, could we build a tower with those? Well, there's the start of a tower. Hmm, I wonder, that looks pretty stable. I wonder if I could build a tower that will hold my stuffed Rocky Rex here. Do you have a stuffy you could try to make a tower that would hold it? Ooh, that's looking pretty wobbly. Wonder. Let's try something. So I added those two and now it looks a little more stable. Let's see if that'll hold. I'll put his tail in there. Oh! All kinds of broke. Maybe you'll have a little more luck. All right, another building material I thought about was TV tubes. I wonder if we can build a tower to hold our Rocky Rex with TV tubes. All right, let's try it. Hey, there we go. There's a little tower made of TP tubes. It might depend on how many TP tubes you have at home to work with, but I wonder if we could make a different tower. Another thing engineers have to design for is wind. When you build a tall tower, if a lot of wind hits it, what do you think would happen? Probably tip over. How do you think I could test this model? Let's try it. Didn't make it. Now 
And here's another idea for testing a tower, especially in Montana. Uh, we get a lot of earthquakes in Montana. So if you're building a tower in Montana, you have to really think and be careful about earthquakes. So here's how I would build an earthquake machine if you wanted to test for earthquakes. I would take some dowels and put them on the counter, then put a cookie sheet on top of there, and then that'll give it a nice spot to roll back and forth. So then you can build your tower on top of your cookie sheet, and when it's time to make an earthquake, you can shake it and roll it back and forth. And that should work pretty good for an earthquake machine if you wanted to build one. And to get in the mindset of building bridges, let's take a look at some famous bridges real quick here too. Let's take a look. What's that one? Do you know that one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's called the the Golden Gate Bridge, and that's pretty cool. And what I think is cool about that one is it's called a suspension bridge. It's got a big cable going from tower to tower, and then off that big cable are a bunch of other little ones, and that's what holds the road up. So that is an interesting kind of bridge. And then how about this one? What's that one made out of? Yeah, it's made out of stone. That's actually a bridge built by uh, the Romans, and it is almost 2,000 years old. It is really old and still standing up. And what's cool about that one is it's built using an arch, and an arch is really strong. When weight comes down on it, it gets spread out evenly over the arch. It can just stay there for a really long time. And how about this bridge? What's up on top of it? Yeah, that's a train. That's an old-time train bridge there, and they call them a trestle. And I like that one because it's got uh, some supports right underneath it, so instead of anything fancy with an arch or a suspension bridge, it just has some parts that hold it up. Pretty simple. And boy, that doesn't look like a very strong bridge, and you know what? It really wasn't. When the first train went across it, it wobbled too much. So they did some re-engineering, and then they built a new bridge about 10 years later to replace it. So if we're going to build a bridge, we need a span. So we've got two platforms here, and let's build our bridge across there. And then we're going to have to figure out a way to test it. So I wonder if there's something we could put on the bridge, and then something else we could put inside it to test it. And if we're outside, I suppose we could make a bigger mess, but if we're inside, maybe not. So I'm going to build a bridge, and I want you to think about what it can be to test it. My bridge is pretty simple. It's just 10 pieces of spaghetti across our span there. What did you come up with to test your bridge? That's a pretty good idea. I'm going to put a paper cup on there, and then I think I'm going to put quarters inside it to see how many quarters it takes to break. Should we try it? Okay. So that's 25 quarters in a cup there on this bridge. And I wonder how many more nickels it could hold or any other coins. So um, this might be a good one for you to try at home and find out. So let's test out this bridge that I built earlier. I've got some ordinary weights that I will add a pound and a half at a time to until it collapses. How many, how many pounds do you think it'll hold? More than 100? Guess we'll find out. seven and a half pounds. So I have changed the design of my bridge here. Can you see what I changed? Yeah, I added some legs to it and uh, they're called uh, piers or piles is the uh, legs of a bridge. So let's see how much weight can this new bridge hold here.
So, let's see, 30? Yep, 30 pounds! That is a lot more pounds than the last bridge. Last bridge without the piers held 6, and this one held 30. That is a much better bridge. So for the next test, I was thinking, if you don't have weights at home, uh, maybe another way to test weights would be uh, to use some cans of beans and things and see how many cans your bridge might hold. So I had a lot of fun making these projects and testing them and showing you a couple of different designs and some different materials. So I hope that gave you some really good ideas for different towers and bridges you can build this week. Remember my mission for you is you're going to have to look around your house and see what materials you have you can actually build with. And then pick a project that you want to build, a tower or a bridge. Maybe you have time you could even do both. And then build it and figure out what you want to test about that project, test it, and then if you have time, uh, maybe make a second design and see if your second design using the same test is a better design or not. That is part of the fun of it. So that's how we'll do some Tours for Tots engineering, and I'll love to see what projects you come up with. That takes us to the story portion of Tours for Tots. So the story we're going to do is just a simple one, The Three Little Pigs. And I bet you didn't think of that as an engineering story, but it is. Once upon a time, there were three little pigs. They lived with their mother. One day, Mama said, Pig said, You're all grown now. It's time for you to go out in the world and live on your own. The pig said goodbye and went on their way. The first little pig decided to build a house made out of straw. Before long, he was finished. He had time to relax in the shade. Sounds pretty nice. The second little pig built a house made of sticks. He had worked hard, but he still had time to relax in the shade. Then the third little pig decided to build a house made out of bricks. He worked very, very hard. It took him a long time to finish building his house, and he did not have any time to rest in the shade. Soon after, a big bad wolf came along. He saw the first little pig napping in the shade. That little pig would make a tasty bite to eat, thought the big bad wolf to himself. The little pig saw the wolf coming and ran inside his straw house. The wolf said, little pig, little pig, let me come in. The little pig said, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, said the big bad wolf. That's what he did. As the straw blew everywhere, the first little pig ran away. The big bad wolf soon came across the second little pig home made out of sticks. The big bad wolf knocked on the door and asked to come in. Not by the air, my chinny chin chin, said the second little pig. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, replied the wolf. The two little pigs ran to their brother's brick house. Right behind them was the wolf. Once again, the wolf asked to come inside. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin, replied the third little pig. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, replied the wolf. And he blew and he blew and could not blow down the brick house. But the wolf didn't give up. He climbed onto the roof and he jumped down the chimney. And he fell right into a pot of water that was heating on the fire. That water was so hot that the wolf jumped out and ran away. And the three little pigs lived happily ever after. All right, that's all we have for Tears for Thoughts this week, so we'll see you next time. In two weeks, we're going to be doing another set of dinosaurs, the duckbills, and the hornheads. So we'll see you then.